Hi everyone, in this second video about the redox reactions, I want to continue discussing oxidation numbers and the concept of oxidation states. So remember what I said in the previous video is this is basically a method used to determine how many electrons are transferred uh, between reactants in a redox reaction. So how can it be used to determine whether a uh, reactant is oxidized or reduced? Well, that depends on what happens to the oxidation number of a particular element. So if the oxidation number goes up or increases for an element, that means the element is oxidized. And when the oxidation number decreases, that means the element is reduced. Okay? So in the next two slides, I'm going to walk through some rules for determining oxidation number, and then we'll go through an example of how to actually count oxidation number for a, um, a reaction. Okay? So let's work through the first slide, which is just the rules for ox assigning oxidation states, okay? And I listed here in order of importance because you really want to start from the top here and kind of work your, work your way to the bottom. <clears throat> if you just have an atom or a, uh, uh, you know, in a free element, for example, things like copper is your reactant or Cl2 is your reactant, then we say the oxidation state or the oxidation number of each of the elements in that uh, atom or that element uh, or that compound is zero. Okay, so the oxidation number for copper is zero in this case, or oxidation number of chlorine, each of the chlorine is also zero. If you have an ion, then the oxidation number is equal to the charge of the ion if it's monoatomic. So, in other words, if you have something like calcium 2 plus, its oxidation number is plus 2 for calcium. Now, one thing you want to remember is the following. The sum of all the oxidation number of all the elements you have in your compound has to equal zero if it's neutral. So things like water, for example, the sum of oxidation numbers for hydrogen and oxygen has to equal zero. The sum of the oxidation numbers for sodium and chloride has to equal zero because sodium chloride is neutral. However, if you have a polyatomic ion, because the species itself is charged, then the sum of the oxidation number of all the atoms must equal, and this is a typo here, so it's equal to the charge of the ion. So for example, in sulfate, the sum of the oxidation number of sulfur plus the four oxygens have to equal negative two, okay? And, okay, now we get to the uh, a little bit more complicated ones in, in the sense of you have to follow a certain ranking. So in this uh, number four, it says that in their compounds, metals always have positive oxidation states. So anytime something is combined with the metal, the metal will have a, a positive oxidation number. Now, not all metals have the same oxidation number at all times, uh, but there's two exceptions. One is group 1A. All the metals in group 1A their oxidation number is always plus one. All the metals in group 2A, their oxidation numbers are always plus two. Now, you might have metals from other groups, like transition metals, for example. Those might have different oxidation numbers, depending on how they're uh, forming their compounds. Now, non-metals is really where this rule becomes quite important to follow um, straight from the top to the bottom, okay, in order of importance. So, first one to start with is fluorine is always negative one, okay? And after fluorine, the second nonmetal is hydrogen, and hydrogen is always plus one. The only exception in this case is when hydrogen forms a compound with a metal, which we call hydrides. In those cases, like sodium hydride, for example, the sodium is plus one because of this rule here, so the hydrogen because you have to add up to zero, has to be negative one, okay? Oxygen, after that, is always negative two. The only exception is when oxygen is bonded as a peroxide, something like hydrogen peroxide. In this case, both of your hydrogens are plus one because the rule for hydrogen precedes the rule for oxygen. So the hydrogens have to be plus one each, which means the two of these becomes plus two because hydrogen peroxide is a neutral molecule, the sum of all the oxidation numbers have to equal zero, so then two 
plus something equals zero, that means the O2 has to be negative two, which means each oxygen atom must be negative one, okay? And then afterwards we follow from those, each of these guys. Group 7A, the halogens, usually negative one. Group 6A is usually negative two. Group 5A is usually negative three, okay? I underline the word usually because it's very important. It's not always, okay? You have to understand this. It's not always negative one. Chlorine, which is a group 7A element, it sometimes is negative one, but sometimes it could be other numbers. So you have to be careful. If there are other things that are preceding these guys, then you have to look at those numbers first before you consider it to be negative one, okay? So that's really important. All right, the second uh, slide it's kind of wanting you to remember that uh, some concepts associated with oxidation number. So because we have this order of importance, a lot of times you can figure out the number, the oxidation number for something like group 5A by looking at who, who, uh, what kind of element it's bonded to. Okay, that's really what point number one is trying to uh, convey to you. The oxidation state of an element in a compound a lot of times depends on the other elements that's present, okay? The only exception are those absolutes, which are group 1A and group 2A. They're absolutely always just plus one and plus two. But all the other ones, some, you can usually see there's one that precedes them, that's the one that you can determine first, and then the other one follows from that. Rule um, number five, really not rule number, number three there, so there's a little typo. Rule number five, which is the ranking of the nonmetals, must always be followed. So you want to make sure you remember what's the one that's more important and then you go down to the bottom to the least important one. Now, there are certain elements where you can't, they're not listed here. That means you can figure their oxidation numbers by relying on the elements that are listed here. An example is methane. Methane, we don't know what the oxidation number of carbon is, but we know that hydrogen must always be plus one because there's four hydrogens here, that means it's negative, that means it's plus four, and then carbon has to balance out the negative, uh, the plus four in hydrogen, and the whole thing is zero, that means that carbon has to have an oxidation number of negative four. Another thing I want to point out is that, remember that oxidation number is really, uh, it's not real, it's a concept we use to help us figure out how many electrons have been transferred in covalent compounds specifically. So when you have compounds like this, Fe3O4, and we know that oxygen has to be negative two, which means the whole thing has to be negative eight here, the iron has to balance out that oxidation charge of negative eight. So the three ions, three ions must combine to form plus eight, right? So then the only thing that makes sense is to assign each iron an oxidation number of plus eight over three, which is a fractional number, but that's okay because uh, it's really not something that, um, it, you know, it's really not something that's real. It's just a method for us to count whether the electrons have been transferred uh, or, uh, you know, loss or gain in a redox reaction. Okay, so what I wanna do now is use the rules that we just talked about and apply it to this example. Remember that this was the reaction that I mentioned earlier at the very beginning um, when discussing oxidation numbers, actually in the end of the previous video. I was saying that it's really hard for us to determine what, the ox what happens in a reaction like this because they're not forming ions, so we don't really know which species has lost electron and which species has gained electrons. We're going to use the oxidation number concept to help us figure out what's going on in this reaction and answer the following question. First off, we want to just know what is the oxidation number of each of the element we have here. Second, we want to talk about, then once we figure that out, we can then figure out which element is oxidized and which is reduced. And then of course we can also figure out what's oxidizing agent and what's the reducing agent. Okay, so here's our reaction. It's combustion of methane. And what we want to know is what is the oxidation number of each of these elements right here. So we're going to start here with methane. 
Out of the two, the one that we know for sure is hydrogen. Remember from those rules. If you forget, you can just go back to the to that slide and take a look at it again. But here's the one that we know. So that's a plus one for each hydrogen. So in other words, for all the four hydrogens, I have plus four. Okay, which means that so that should be four if it's unclear. And then because the whole thing is zero, that means my carbon has to be negative four. So that's the oxidation number of the carbon because there's only one carbon there. Okay, so it's negative four and plus one. Oxygen here, it's uh, really just an atom in a one element co compound. So both oxygens have an oxidation number of zero. Okay, and then we go here, carbon and oxygen again. We don't know carbon, but we know oxygen. Oxygen is supposed to be negative two. So then we have two oxygens, that means it's negative 4. To balance that out, carbon must be positive 4. So that's the charge on the carbon, that's the oxidation number on the carbon. Lastly, we got to H2O. H is the one we know, and it has to be plus 1, right, plus 1. So each one of it is plus 1, and then so this is plus 2. That means the oxygen is then negative 2, of course. So then we get that one as well, okay? So that's how you determine the oxidation number. The next question asks us to know which species is oxidized and which one is reduced. Remember what I said at the beginning about oxidation number. When oxidation number increases, that means the element is oxidized. And then when oxidation number decreases, that means the element is reduced, okay? So we can see from here which one is increasing. If you look up the, I'm going to change the color a little bit here so you can see it better. If you look here, these are the numbers that we have. Negative 4 for carbon and plus 4 for carbon after the reaction. So carbon has gone from negative 4 to plus 4. So that means that carbon is oxidized. Okay. So let's try to look for the one that's reduced. The, st the compound that's or the element that's reduced, um, let's see H here. H is plus 1 before reaction. It's plus 1 after reaction, so it doesn't change. So in other words, nothing happens to the H. Oxygen, initially it's 0. After reaction, it becomes negative 2 in both cases. So then oxygen goes from 0 to negative 2. So then oxygen is reduced. Okay, so to complete your answer here, what you want to do is basically figure out what the oxidation, what the reducing agent, what's the oxidizing agent. Remember that the thing that's causing something else to be oxidized is called the oxidizing agent. That means that thing itself is reduced. Since oxygen is the one that's reduced, that means O2 is the oxidizing agent. So when we discuss the agent, we say the reactant itself is the uh, species. So that's the oxidizing agent. And then C, because C is being oxidized, that means the compound that contains this carbon is the one that's making the other species reduce. So it's the reducing agent. In this case, the reactant that contains carbon is CH4. So CH4 is our reducing agent. Okay, so I hope this is clear enough to explain how we can use the concept of oxidation number to determine whether you have a redox reaction or not and to figure out what's oxidized, what's reduced, and who's the oxidizing agent and who's the reducing agent. In the next video, I'm going to talk specifically about the concept of balancing redox equations using oxidizing, the oxidation number.